Hey, what's going on? Thanks for coming by. Uh, today I'm just talking about my CAN application. Uh, version 1007 I have now. Um, basically I have a monitor. Um, that I, I cleaned it up a little bit. I, I um, made it a little bit more simple. Um, I had this whole thing with the... You know, basically with CAN, you have a CAN ID, which in this case would be called the header. And then the data, right? And But I have this CAN, this header, this mask stuff going on. Now what I did is I made it so you can just shut this off. Now if you just know I'm looking at CAN, you know, whatever, some CAN address, 250, I don't know. That you can now just say, I'm just, I just care about that one address. And here is the monitor going forever. Uh, of course, we still have this grid. The grid, I'm, uh, I, I'm sort of can't really ever get happy about this monitor because it never works the way I, the way I want it. And um, I wanted to add some kind of monitoring capability to my regular application, but I found a problem, an impossible problem to overcome. Um, so let me show you. Let me cut right to the chase what that problem was. Well, there's an address in my um, 230. I'm hooked up to my Ford F-150. Now, I shut this mask, mask stuff off. So now the ELM3, when I, here's the other thing. I had these buttons. It was never clear whether you're supposed to hit init or listen or what was init doing. Well, initialize init, right? Init, initialize, same thing. Basically, it is setting up the ELM 327 for the particular header and mask that you might have in here. So therefore if you change the header, the mask, or whether or not you use the mask, these buttons will disable until you reinitialize. Right? So I'm initializing and now I'm saying I only want to talk to address 3230. Now I can listen and I can stop. Right? I can to go to the grid I can listen and stop as long as I don't change my header or mask or if I click use mask well, as soon as I click use mask watch right you, you, then it's like oh okay I the software is like I detected you changed something so now you have to hit the init and the init just goes out and then you can do your mask and and until you change one of these things up here you can just stop and listen stop and listen right so now 230 is an address that i found watch it'll it will t here see how we have the buffer full i was going to say it was going to time out but and it just did so it should say yeah no response from system buffer full buffer full is coming from the 320 the l on 327 you now maybe I have a cheap dongle, maybe there's better dongles, whatever. But the fact is, is that I rate the software to work for the crappiest dongle. And okay, so okay, the mask is on. So let me shut the mask off. So that I'm only talking to two thirty. Let me try this again. See, the point is, is when I'm looking at let me when I'm looking at one. I gotta no, I gotta do that. When I'm looking at one address one can ID one can header 230 I expect that when I say listen that it will just run and run and run and run but I'm getting buffer full buffer full basically is the ELM 327 saying I cannot hack what's going on I can't handle it my software will then say I don't you know I'm not getting a response but the ELM 327 stops. Now what I was doing in the old version is I would just restart the monitor. But I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think it's helpful. Um, so I just let, if a buffer gets full, then it just stops. And you could just start listening again. Right? No problem. Oh, whoop. Sometimes you got to hit it in the head twice. But see, it, it buffers out. And I played around with a lot of different settings and timings and things and I, I just could not get this to work and, and so so what's the conclusion? The conclusion is that the L327 is a crappy monitor device. Now I know that there's uh okay so let me go back to the mask thing which we all hate because it's so freaking confusing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say ignore the three and the zero that's what the two zeros mean the f means only look for f zero zero means only look for things that have two and i don't care about the other you know 
two, three, zero. I don't care about the three and the zero based on the two zeros here. Okay. So uh, it's so hard to explain. So I'm going to, uh, whoops, I'm going to init. And then when I listen, it will definitely buffer out. But so I'm seeing 230, 211, 250, 200. So let's see if we can remember those. So let me see. I'm looking for a clean. That's what I'm looking for. A clean. What happened here? I'm looking for a signal that doesn't buffer. Buffer. Yes, buffer out. It's hard to like, it's kind of like driving and talking at the same time. I guess that should be easy too. Yeah. See, and now I'm looking at only addresses at address 211. And see, no, it's not buffering out. It's just playing out. It's not stopping. If I change over to the grid, this supposedly is the data that's coming in. Looks like it doesn't change. Uh, I think 250 was one. And listen, I'm not seeing anything there. Oh, 251 I put in? No, 250 I said. Let me reinitialize. Listen, yeah, 250 is another one that, okay, that doesn't buffer out either. But then I get this error. Um, it, let's let's see what that is. It, it's not really, a, it's not our error. It's an error from the three, uh, ELM 327. At the end of the data, now, if you look at the spec sheet, the data error says that maybe this isn't our data or maybe this is actually data that's coming from somewhere else or something's happening. But it's still, you can see it. So, but that's what I'm getting at. This is very haphazard. So, but at least now we can sort of, I think there was, I just wanted to show you guys one where it was relatively clean looking. I don't know if I can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking for anything in the fours. So let me make the second digits anything. Let me init that. Because when you get a nice signal that doesn't have any errors, it's very... Yeah, see, here's a bunch of them. See, this this buffered out. But here's it's like four... Let's go look at 4B. Look like, like there's a bunch of stuff coming off of 4B and 4C. So let's see. So now I want to filter it down to 4B, and now I'm going to make the second character F in, whoops, the second character F in my fil my mask, so that now it's just going to look for things that are 4B. Initialize. The buttons disabling, I think, helps. It just helps you keep, up, keep track. So let's see, 4B. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. This is not this is not buffering out. We're we're able to handle all this data. So now if I come back to the grid kind of does a piss poor job at this, doesn't do the greatest job, but it gets some stuff in here. I don't know what this is like repeated. Anyway, I think you get the picture. Everybody has their own different reasons for looking at the data. See now here is a mat. See now I'm looking at multiple addresses that that the ELM327 can handle. And the the thing is is that um, when I go and I hack into a car, I'm using this system right here, right. And basically what you see here is uh, uh, Raspberry Pi. It's a Linux system. Over to the left, you'll see that that's sort of my insert. Uh, one end will go into the car, the other end of the dongle, as you can see, is plugged in there. A couple of power supplies, I have its, its own screen. It's a, it's a whole separate computer only for monitoring. This, this setup you're looking at right here is just for monitoring the, the can in a car. So I can ha that's how I got those bi-directional commands out of the Tech 2. But over here, this thing is such a poor performer in terms... Well... It depends what you're looking at. If you're just looking at a specific piece of data, like, let's stop this thing for a second. I don't know if any of this is changing, but let's say we're looking for just 4B, 4B0, right? So I can shut my mask off, and then, I, well, 4B0 is set. Now the 0 is actually, specifically, it's going to look for that. So I initialize that, and then I'll say, listen... Now it's just the 4B0, right? So now it's just just that one address. 
And when you have your mask shut off, your use mask shut off, the grid knows to ignore any address except for the one that's spe specifically specified here. So as this changes, and the light indicates that we're not timing out, so we're actually monitoring this particular address right here. But I guess the, the, the upgrade here is really so that you can just... The, the, you know, the, the masks, believe me, this isn't something I made up. If, it, I, it, if anything, it would be from to address, but the way the masks, the mat masks, the way the masks work, the way the masks work, it's really hard, at least for my brain to wrap around and come up with a way. These are based on bits, but not really ranges of data. So it's kind of difficult. So I figure, you know what, let's just get normal, man. If I have a specific address, I can just put it in there, and I can init, and I can monitor it. And I got rid of the protocol specification here because I don't think specifying protocol for generic CAN monitoring, I don't know, maybe I'll put it back. I'm trying to make this easier to use because I was trying to use it. Oh, okay. So anyway, why was I even doing this? I was trying to add to, to my application, right? We have user PIDs. And the user pids are very straightforward. Um, you know, they're just uh, these things where you send a code in and then you get a resp how many, you know, response or whatever. But see, I wanted to create something where you could monitor an ECU address. And I wanted to put this into my main application. But I really don't want to do that now. It almost worked. So if I start 420, 420, dude. Dude, 420. I don't know what this number is. I think it's a temperature or something because it was 70 before. No, it's not colder. I don't know what it is anyway. So it will. I, I can monitor this, right? But the problem is, is when I try to do like engine cooling, like like regular PIDs with these broadcasts monitor. When I try to run a monitor with regular, it just it's too much, man. It is too much for the ELM327. Let's see what happens. I think this is going to break. All right. If it's working now, it's only by accident. <laughs> I really pushed. I've been really pushing to try to make this work. So 420 is a, right? So 420 is not even receiving like any command. It's just broadcasting. 70EO is receiving. Oh, 70EO, these two. Maybe if you only use one, it gets crazy. If you if you add like another ECU in here, here let's see, let's let's do that. Let's or another yeah, there you go, another broadcast address in there. Now this thing's gonna blow. This thing's gonna have a stroke. Okay, that's what that was not supposed to work. All right, maybe I did more work than I thought because this looks like it's working, doesn't it? All right, something doesn't work. Some scenario. So let me put a tra even though this okay. So there is no trans ECU in my Ford, but let's just run and see what happens. Now this will really mess things up. It's still getting the data. Maybe I can put these. Oh, you know what? Maybe they're not changing now. I can't believe this is working. Okay, so theoretically, if this right here set of PIDs is working, then I have regular PID here, trans sending a command, getting a response. Regular PID here, sending a command, getting a response. This thing is sending a com Wow, that is alive. I'm blown away. Anyway, okay, I gotta come back in here and see what's going on. And then I got a trans temp here. Trans, there is no 70U E2. In the GM, yeah, for the transmission, but in the, my Ford F-150, there is no trans, uh, I don't think there's a trans ECU at all. I think it's all, the. I think the powertrain controller is basically the engine and the transmission. So this is empty, this is like getting an empty or non-response, but this 420 is supposedly, oh, uh, nah, see, nah, there's the problem, the data is getting mixed up. One of these isn't working. This becomes problematic when I try to mix up. When and I, and if I was going to add this, I would want you guys to have the freedom to add. Uh, like these two are broadcast, right? These two are not sent. These are like monitor pits. 
I thought, I think, yeah, I think that's what it is. You can only have one monitor PID in here. But then that's weird because that you can have as many regular PIDs. So so I'm running into this. The ELM 327 is, is you know, I got to keep switching its modes. I have to say, oh, you're a monitor now. Oh, and, and this is having many times a second, right? It's going through all these data points constantly. Oh, and look here. Look what happened to my temperature, my engine coolant temperature. So I'm running into all kinds of data integrity problems. I think that can be fixed, the data integrity, like that. how this engine, that should be fixable. Or maybe this stopped communicating. See, stuff went off the rails here. See that? This is no good. So I don't think I'm going to incorporate these monitor things into the user PIDs. Now, what I could do is I could maybe create, you know, maybe come back out here and active test isn't in the full app. But, you know, maybe I could create a monitor or, or but only for one ECU. Right, I'm not going to get into this whole mask stuff. If I add a monitor onto the main app, I won't even add. There won't be any mask. It'll just be look. If you want to monitor something, here's a here's a. This is what I'm thinking. In the main app, I, I add a monitor feature. You, all you can do is put in some specific header. There's not going to be any games with masks or anything. And then all I'll do is is just have. I won't have this grid thing. So all you can do is like specify a header and then look at the crap that comes on the screen and that's it. So I think that's maybe that what I'm going to do. I'm disappointed and I'm sad. Well, well, actually I'm not not really that sad. I'm sad about other things but not that. Uh <laughs> Um so in the monitor at least now you can just if you can get this now right off the website the links below where you could just shut the stupid mask stuff off. You put in a header that you think or you're pretty sure is the right one. And then you can just init and then you don't have you don't have to wonder what what does init do and when do I hit init? It's just you hit init when listen isn't lit up. When stop and listen when neither stop or listen is right now, right. You hit init when you can when these are both disabled. Once you get your header set or whatever your thing is set, you hit in it, you go, and then you can just start listening. And of course, clear is just, you know, clear just clears the data. The clear doesn't do anything, right? So just go back to listen. Right? So, it's a big stupid uh, video about really not much. But hey, I'm glad you came by. I wanted to talk to you guys again. I haven't, I haven't spoken to you guys in a while. And, uh,. I'm not sure where I'm going with all this stuff. Um, you, you know, if I get official with the bi-directional and all the all that, it, it's subject to NDEs, not near-death experiences, but non-disclosure agreements, EA, whatever, you know. Because the day I get totally legitimate writing software using actual data that I'm getting um, is the day that I got to stop talking about it. Uh, because when you get access to that information, you sign agreements saying, I will not disclose this information. <laughs> so right now, while we're hacking at it, I can say anything I want because I won't be breaking any agreements. So I don't know. I don't know what this channel is doing. I don't know what's... Uh... But hey, I really appreciate everybody who's uh, come along, checked out, and subscribed and all that kind of stuff, man, you know. And... Uh... Anyway, there it is. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Where where's